Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another math video. This one for uh, my grade 11 students again, who are doing um, a radical unit. So uh, we've already done this in class, and um, I've already made a video. I keep saying um a lot this morning. I don't know why. Got to knock the rust off. I haven't made videos in a long time. Um, there we go again. So we've just finished um, multiplying radicals and we've done some reducing things like that so this is basically a recap of that just made a video on square root of variables so this is an extension of that to cube root of variables so um, first thing we need to recognize and I'm going to take a similar path as I did with the other video is that a cube root actually means an exponent of 1 over 3 so as we learned in the last video that a square root is an exponent of half, right? So we can apply this again to figure out what makes an exponent a perfect cube and what makes it a not a perfect cube. So let's do a few examples. So if I have something very simple, x to the 6, we can write that x to the 6 as x to the 1 over 3. So again, this is a power of power. So what ends up happening is you end up multiplying these two together. So 6 times 1 over 3. So I'll take my time and do that really carefully. So 6 times 1 over 3. And then when I do the math on 6 times 1 over 3, of course, that's just x squared, x to the 2. 1 over 3 times 6 is 2. So basically what that tells me is that the cube root of x to the 6 is x squared. So I want you guys to think about now, well, why? How did I get that? How can you do that with all these all these messy steps here? Because I would never do this if I was just doing a question. I would just do it straight up, right? So I'll do it one more time. So x to the 15. We think in our heads, of course. This is our head steps. It is x to the 15 times 1 over 3. So I replace that entire cube root with an exponent of 1 over 3. The 15 times 1 over 3 is x to the 15 times 1 over 3. So I actually just get rid of the brackets. And again, that's definitely not a step you would need to write. So 15 times 1 over 3 is x to the 5. So what you're probably seeing is that all I end up doing is dividing my exponent by 3, right? So the rule is that an exponent is a perfect, well, a variable with an exponent is a perfect cube if the exponent is divisible by 3. So, simple example, uh, x to the 21. Well, 21 is divisible by 3. If I divide 21 by 3, I get 7. So that means the cube root of x to the 21 is x to the 7. It's that easy. Now, if you had something a little more, uh, a little more complicated, maybe you have x to the 12 and then y to the 6. Well, this is really no different. So if you get multiple things underneath the root, and I, I'm going to make a video with some more complicated examples later on. I'm focusing on variables because that's really newish to us. So I want to make sure everyone gets that. But well, all you need to do is treat these individually. So it would be like, um, let me move the page down a little bit. So x cube root of x to the 12 individually, and then cube root of y to the 6. So 12 is divisible by 3. So what that means is the square root, cube root, sorry, of x to the 12 is x to the 4. And then the cube root of y to the 6, well, 6 divided by 3 is 2, so y to the 2. So it's a really straightforward rule to remember, and I got my grammar messed up on this one too. So if a variable under a cube root has an exponent divisible by 3, it is a perfect cube. All right, so if a variable on a cube root has an exponent divisible by 3, it's a perfect cube. That's the rule to remember. So very straightforward rule, but also very easy to forget. So now the other thing that um, we're going to do now is what happens if the exponent is not divisible by 3? So an example here of 7. So if that occurs, what we have to do is we have to break up our x um, our variable x to the 7 into a perfect cube and a non-perfect cube. So what I would do is I would just walk back my exponent. So I would start with 7 
The next closest one below it is 6. Is that divisible by 3? If it's a yes, then I would write it. So I'd write x to the 6. So that, because it's divisible by 3, this is a perfect cube, right? So that guy right there is perfect. It's a perfect cube. And then I walked back 1, so I need to make sure that these exponents add together to get that 7, right? That's the rule when you're multiplying the, uh, variables, you add the exponents. So 6 plus 1 is 7. So now what I would do is break up my x to the 6 and my x. So I know the cube root of x to the 6. Well, you divide the exponent by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the x squared on the outside. And then this guy right here, that's a non-perfect, right? So I can't do anything with x, just x by itself. I can't reduce it down. So I leave it. I just leave it alone. So that's what you do if you do um, a non-perfect cube. You have to reduce it down as much as possible. So let's try another one, x to the 14. So I got to start walking it back. All right, so I'm looking for a number less than 14. That's divisible by 3. So I go to the next one, 13, not divisible by 3. So then I walk it back again, 12. So what would be? x to the 12. Now I got to make sure that I add back to get that 14. So it'd be x to the 2. So 12 plus 2 is 14. All right. So I got a perfect, this guy here is my perfect cube. Reason being, it's divisible by, the exponent is divisible by 3. And 2 is not perfect. The exponent is not divisible by 3. This other non-perfect uh, guy that you're going to have here, non-perfect variable that you're going to have here, that's always going to be less than 2 for a perfect cube. All right. So if you have something like 4, that's no good. It still has a perfect uh, cube inside of it. So if you use my rule and just walk back one at a time, you'll always find within 2, it'll be divisible by 3. So then you break it up. So it becomes x to the 12. And then x squared. And what happens is the cube root of x to the 12 is 12 divisible by 3. Yes, it is. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So it becomes x to the 4. And then the cube root of x squared. And there it is. That's my reduced non-perfect cube. All right, we'll try one more. Now, so I'm going to start with 30. I'm going to start walking it back. Well, actually, 30. That's already perfect. I don't need to walk it back. 30 is divisible by 3. So that's just a bad example on my part. But yeah, it's nice to see that. It, sometimes you got to keep, keep you on your toes, right? So 30 divisible by 3. Yes, it is. We don't have to do anything. 30 divided by 3 is x to the 10. All right, so that, I guess that's really the first step. That's a lesson you can learn from my mess up there, is that the first step is always check is the divisible by 3. If it isn't, you got to do this method. If it is, you just simply divide the exponent by 3 and call it a day. All right, guys, I hope this video helps. Um, like, subscribe, share, and thanks for watching. If you got any questions, you can, you know, if you're one of my students, you can ask me on Google or you can drop a comment. Thank you very much. See you guys in class.